Hello, pre-algebra students. This is chapter 6.8, The Multiplication Principle. So far in this chapter, we've counted outcomes to find probabilities. Now we're going to use multiplication to find probabilities. You are buying new eyeglasses, and you must choose the frame material and shape. The frame material can be either plastic or metal, and the frame shape can be rectangular, oval, cat's eyes, or round. How many different frames are possible? One way to count the number of possibilities in a problem such as this is to use a tree diagram. A tree diagram uses branching to list choices. Here's a tree diagram representing your glasses choices. First, we list the frame materials. Plastic or metal. Then we list the frame shapes for each frame material. Rectangular, oval, cat's eye round for plastic, and the same for, for metal. Now we simply count. We have all of the possibilities here in front of us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight possible choices, or eight possible combinations of frames and shapes. Now let's say that each of the different eyeglasses in example one also comes in two colors, red or black. Copy the tree diagram in your notebook and add the new choices. Now how many possible choices for frames are there? Press pause while you figure this out. A quicker way to count the number of possibilities displayed in a tree diagram is to use the multiplication principle. The multiplication principle uses multiplication to find the number of possible ways two or more events can occur together. If one event can occur in m ways, and for each of these ways a second event can occur in n ways, then the number of ways the two events can occur together is m times n. The multiplication principle can be extended to three or more events as well. Let's work out an example. We're rolling a red and a blue number cube. Use the multiplication principle to find the number of different outcomes that are possible. So first, we'll write the number of outcomes for the red cube. That would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there are six possible outcomes for the red cube. Now let's multiply by the number of outcomes for the blue cube. The blue cube would also have six possible outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, or six. So the total number of possible outcomes of rolling the two die is 36. You could have 36 different possible combinations of rolling the red die and the blue die. Now that we've worked this example, I want you to figure out how many different outcomes are possible when you flip a coin and roll a number cube. Press pause while you figure it out. Let's put all of this together to find a probability. A combination lock has 40 numbers on its dial. To open the lock, you must turn the dial right to the first number, left to the second number, and then right to the third number. You randomly choose three numbers on the lock. What is the probability that you choose the correct combination? Okay, first, we need to find all of the different possible combinations. So we're going to turn to the right for the first number, and there are 40 possible choices. We're going to turn to the left for the second number, and there are also 40 possible choices. We're going to turn back right again for the last number, and there are also 40 possible choices. So to find the probability that we choose the correct combination, we need to take 40 times 40 times 40, which gives us an answer of 64,000. Okay, so the probability of the correct combination is there's only one correct combination, so that's the only possible favorable outcome. And then the possible outcomes are, well, 64,000. So your odds are not looking very good. The probability that you choose the correct combination is 1 in 64,000. 
Sorry, that's pretty close to zero and impossible. All right, don't go on any lock picking sprees until I see you tomorrow. But when I do see you tomorrow, we'll continue working on probability, odds, and using the multiplication principle to simplify that process. See you then.